have time to move on next speaker. I'd like to thank Dr. Uchida again. Thank you very much. So the, our next speaker is Dr. Ishigaki. Ishigaki is here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can find it. Yeah. And uh, you, yeah, share the slides. So the, uh, okay, let's start the next speaker. So the, our next speaker is Dr. Ishigaki, an assistant professor in Faculty of Life and Environmental Science, Shimane University in Japan. As Professor Ozaki introduced her research on yesterday's lectures, her interest in research is the visualization of water in living systems. Today, i like her to talk about it in the title, uh, Assessment of Biological Function and Metabolic Activity During Envi Embryogenesis by Water Analysis Using Near-Infrared Spectroscopy, so the, now, uh, you, Ishi, Dr. Ishigaki, we see the not full version. Full, so the, I think we see the uh, speakers version. Your presentation, can you make your presentation full? Ishigaki-sensei. Yeah. Here, um, can you project the whole screen? Because uh, right now we're seeing also the um, the text of your notes and so on. Can you make your screen bigger? Bigger, bigger. Yeah. You mean hmm. this one? I mean to remove the right part, if you can. If if it's not, <laughs> if it doesn't, ah. Yeah, maybe better. Yeah. So the yeah. Uh, okay. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Start. Yeah. Please start your presentation, Dr. Ishigaki. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mika Ishigaki, and first of all. Yeah, Professor Tenkova, a uh, congratulations for retiring and beginning a new year a milestone in your life. And I'm looking forward to seeing you soon in the near future. I hope so. Yeah? Thank <laughs> you. Okay, so today uh, I would like to introduce my recent research. Uh, yeah, the title is already uh, introduced by uh, Dr. Tanaka, yes. So, uh, let's start, okay. So, the, as the background of this research, uh, I want to introduce uh, the background of this research. The main component of living body is water and the uh, ratio of the water is overwhelmingly higher than the other components such as DNA, proteins, and lipids. And furthermore, the biochemical reactions also take place within water. So the influence of the bioreaction, uh, bioreactions also take place within water. So the influence, um, influence of the reaction is likely to be transcribed to water. So therefore, we have been trying to evaluate the biological functions and bioactivity through water using NIR spectroscopy and imaging. Yeah, this graph shows the NIR absorbance spectra of water, and we can see two broad peaks, uh, two broad peaks. And this peak is assigned to the combination of a symmetric oil, uh, oil stretching and bending moors. And this is due to the combination of asymmetric and uh, symmetric oil stretching moors. And we can see, uh, and when the water structure is, uh, water temperature is changed from 10 to 8 degrees centigrade, we can see that these two peaks shift in higher wave number with increasing temperature. Uh, to investigate the spectral variations depending on temperature, subtraction spectra were calculated. 
this graph shows the different spectra at around 5,000 and 7,000 wave number based on the uh, spectrum at 10 degrees centigrade. And we can see that the peak intensity at higher wave number increased and the uh, ones at lower wave number, on the other hand, decreased. The trend can be also seen in the second derivative spectra of water and the peak intensity at higher and lower wave number were increasing and decreasing respectively as the temperature increased. The previous studies about water using NIR spectroscopy reported that water can be explained by mainly two structural components and the component that increases at higher temperature is called uh, weakly hydrogen bonded water, WHB. And the component that decreases uh, with increasing temperature is called strongly hydrogen bonded water, SHB. And the ratio of the two components changes with temperature variations. Here, the SHB water is defined as water having hydrogen bonding with two lone pairs and WHB is as those having hydrogen bond in, uh, bend, bend, in a bent shape. In this way, the difference in the state of hydrogen bond can be detected using NIR spectroscopy. Oh, okay, sorry. It does not work. Okay. It's okay? Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. So now I would like to uh, introduce the research applying the NIR spectroscopy and imaging to word analysis of living bodies. Uh, when we carried out the word analysis of living organism, we focused on the water peak at around 5,000 wave number because uh, it does not overlap with other peaks over tons or combination modes. Furthermore, uh, there exist amide bands at around 4,800 or 4,600 wave number. That is, NIR spectroscopy is the only way to simultaneously investigate water and proteins in the living bodies in situ in non-destructive and non-invasive manner. Okay, as an application to living organism, we focused on the embryogenesis of Japanese medaka fish eggs. And we aim to capture the life signals within the eggs due to uh, the activation of embryogenesis by investigating water structure changes. Therefore, the targeted X samples were with and without activation of embryogenesis. The first group was the X activated by fertilization. In this group, X were on the first day after fertilization and they showed normal egg development. And in non-activated X groups, uh, three kinds of eggs were investigated. The eggs were uh, the culturing out of cold, under cold temperature, instant freezing by liquid, liquid nitrogen, or unfertilized. As experimental conditions, NIR measurements were performed in both point and imaging modes. The eggs were sandwiched with two glass slides uh, with pinch cocks to regulate the optical pass length about 0.36 millimeters. The wave number resolution was eight wave number, spatial resolution was 25 micrometer, and the accumulation was eight times. About 10 points per an X were measured in the point more measurements. Uh, this figure shows NIR, I mean NIR absorbance spectra and its second derivative of four kinds of X. A 
and we can see the broad peaks uh, around here uh, due to water absorbance. And in the second derivative spectra, uh, we can see small peaks attributed to protein and lipids. To investigate the difference component characteristic for each A groups, principal component analysis was carried out for the data set of second derivative spectra, including all egg species. This figure shows the scope plots of PC1 versus PC2. As you can see, the data set was roughly classified into two groups uh, by PC2 component, the activated and non-activated groups. Uh, they are loading plots of PC1 and PC2. In the PC1 loading, we can see that uh, the normal second derivative spectra of water and in the loading plot of PC2, we can see uh, two peaks in minus directions and uh, one peak in plus directions. So the minus and the plus peak in the loading plot of PC2, uh, no, 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 the, this is a, a scope plot of PC, a PC1 versus PC2. And in activated X, the square plots of PC2 has negative values in uh, uh, in average. So the minus and the plus peak in the loading plot of PC2 wax additive and suppressive in the second derivative spectra inactivated X. And totally, the peak of position of weakly hydrogen bonding water shifted in higher wave number. As already mentioned, uh, water spectra can be mainly with two components of water, WHB and SHB. Therefore, the PCA results indicate that the ratio of WHB water uh, was getting higher in activated X than those inactivated X. To confirm the spectral variation indicated by PCA, the, ra the ratio of the second derivative intensities defined as SHB uh, divided by WHB was calculated. This graph shows the ratio of two water components, and we can see that the contribution of SHB water was smaller in activated X than those in non-activated X. Furthermore, to estimate the peak position of WHB in the second derivative spectra, one more derivatives were uh, calculated and extracted the wave number information uh, where the value of third uh, derivatives became zero. This graph shows the peak position of the WHB water and we can see and from two to four wave number upward shift was observed in activated X. These two results are consistent with the interpretation of PCA results. Uh, here, uh, it should be discussed whether the magnitude of the peak shift was significant or not to discuss the inference uh, by egg bioactivity on water the inference of some perturbation to the water structure were variated in vitro system, including ion concentration, temperature, protein concentration, and the secondary structural changes of proteins. And the magnitude of the peak shift was quantitatively evaluated. In the case of the ion concentration changes, NaCl and NH2SO4 were selected. And the two to four wave number peak shift required about one molar concentration changes. And such large changes in ion concentration truly do not seem feasible within living X. In the second case, a change in the water temperature by 50 degrees centigrade was needed to obtain two to four wave number peak shift. The inner water temperature within the activated X 
was unlikely to change very much. In the third case, more than a 20 weight percent albumin concentration was required to, uh, to induce a significant peak shift of water. In the last case, on the other hand, the protein secondary structure changes from an alpha helix to beta sheet, leading the upward frequency shift of the water peak by uh, 10 to 15 wave number shift. Uh, to further examine the relationship between water and protein secondary structure, denaturation of uh, three kinds of proteins were investigated. With an increase in the proportion of beta sheet, the peaks due to combination of amide A and three moles shifted to higher wave number in all three samples. And these graphs show the variation of the peak shift of amide and water bands. The upward shift frequency shift of amide and water bands were made clear to occur simultaneously with the denaturation of proteins. That is, the proportion of WHB water was likely to be increased with a higher proportion of the beta sheet structure of protein. In the second derivative of the four kinds of fish eggs, the downward, downward shift of the amide band in the activated in the activated X were confirmed. The result can be interpreted as two possibilities. The first uh, is the first one is the protein secondary structure was changed from uh, to uh, to alpha helix rich structure. As we can see from the figure, each protein has different fre frequency in the amide A and three moles. And actually, many kinds of proteins are including, included in real living bodies. So the second possibility is that the protein components should at least be changed by gene expression after fertilization. And the amide mode was downshifted in the activated X regardless of the protein secondary structure variation. To verify the two possibilities, Raman spectra was supplementary obtained from four kinds of eggs. The Raman bands of amide 1 and 3 reflect the secondary structure of proteins, and in activated eggs, they shifted to higher and lower frequency in amide 1 and 3 moles respectively. And it means that the protein secondary structure changes from alpha helix to beta sheet rich structure. Therefore, the two possibilities are expected by NIR results. The first one was ruled out. And about the second possibility, protein components were drastically changed. And furthermore, the beta sheet rich structure were increased after fertilization. That is, after embryogenesis was activated by fertilization, protein were new regenerated with the gene expression, protein secondary structure was changed to beta sheet rich, the protein structure changes gave inference on the water structure and the proportion of WHB water increased. And the activation of an embryogenesis can be assessed by water analysis. The variation of water structure were visualized. They were a visible image of four kinds of eggs, activated and non-activated. Inactivated eggs, we can see three parts uh, three parts of the X, oil droplets, yolk, and blast cyst. This part will be a uh, fish. In an egg incubated at lower temperature, three structure can also be seen at the first glance. Uh, it is indistinguishable from an activated X. NIR images were constructed by plotting the ratio of SHB over WHB 
and the peak shift of the WHB water. The reddish color uh, mean the higher ratio of SHB water, and we can see that the proportion of SHB water was lower in the yolk parts of activated eggs than those in non-activated eggs because these yolk parts uh, looks like a uh, bluish color. So we can we successfully capture the water structure variation depending on bioactivity. In summary, the effect of bioactivity on water structure was investigated. And it was made clear that the protein structure changes after fertilization was a possible factor to give influence on water structure and water can be a biomarker to assess the bioactivity. And in IR imaging, a water structure variation successfully visualize a water distribution with different structure. This work has been uh, published in Analytical Chemistry and it was selected as a cover art. I'm very pleased if you could access it. That's all for my today's talk. In the end, I want to introduce my collaborators uh, represented, by, represented by Professor Ozaki and his students in Kansaiyaku University of Japan. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Isigaki. It was a wonderful presentation. Any question or comment? But uh, we have no time. Uh, one minute, just one minute. So short question we can accept. So the... Any comment or question? Wrong comments, sorry. Okay, yeah. Ishiki sensei uh, this is the first time I uh, actually recalculated what your bands mean. So I understood you worked with a combination band of water, basically. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So uh, I wanted to comment that this is something, that, uh, what you found for um, what is life, what it means to activate an egg is also connected to what it means uh, for example, for water to be fresh, or uh, sorry, food to be fresh, and so on. It is all re uh, really related to mobility of of water. This is what m my conclusion so far is. Is this something or availability of water to make bonds? Is this uh, how you see it also? What? what does it mean? so? What does it mean to have activated egg to be uh, alive in the terms of water? Can you? Comments. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it is um, a little bit difficult question. Yeah, but uh, the the life activity uh, activity this uh, life uh, reactions are reflect the, is reflected to the water structure changes, and we can see that the, this is a alive or a dead X or this is uh, the uh, developing X or not can be assessed by water uh, and water structure and uh, I cannot understand the what you mean and what you want to uh, <laughs> know about uh, well since um, I want uh, all the talks today uh, was uh, was um, were actually talking about basically the same thing it is about the um, phase transition of water or uh, changes in the mobility of water species of availability for of water species to hydrate other things mm -hmm. and uh, charge uh, usually one of the most important is charged uh, charged species like uh, protons for example so mm -hmm. i think that this uh, so for example our results showed that the best way to predict water activity is using the exactly the region you used for um, uh, differentiating between what uh, what is alive egg and what is not. Mm -hmm. so in that terms, we connected the water activity with the mobility of protons. So that is what I um, can you can you uh, say something like that? Uh, can, can you conclude what it means to be uh, a living egg? in the terms of water availability or in terms of the water structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we can, yeah, 
yeah, this result uh, indicates that uh, we can uh, see the activity of this is uh, alive in X or not, or we can uh, predict the X statement, yes. <laughs> it does, does, does it make sense? Complex. Uh, it makes absolute sense and it is yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yes. And a beautiful talk, beautiful papers also. I, I read all of your papers. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, the, yeah, it's time to the end of the this session. So, the, uh, maybe uh, our schedule is uh, next day is uh, lunchtime. And uh, our next session will start at uh, 1 p.m., okay? Like, yes. Yeah, thank okay. you. Yeah, so, thank you for the two speakers, Dr. Uchida and Dr. Ishigaki. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's finished. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Have, have a good rest. Yeah.